The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour, and of course, today's Fed Day. But this is actually a, quite a critical week, and I'll explain why. Look, <clears throat> at least from my perception, the Dow, which is down 137, was down much more earlier. It hit 25,709. <clears throat> now it's at 25,749, just 40 points higher. But it's trying to hold the 14 period moving average, that black line. What I've been talking about for quite a while is that like, unlike the S&P or even the QQQ, which is really leading the way up, the MACD, the moving average convergence divergence, my fear was that this week we could deflect lower with just a, a bit of a pullback and then start to make the W formation so that the MACD can cross positive. But it hasn't crossed positive with a move from 25,252 to 26,109, and it hasn't yet crossed positive, it hasn't even, not even close. <clears throat> That's a little concern, disconcerting. Stochastic should have gone at least to the 75% area, it's at 67% right now. Also somewhat disappointing. But the weekly charts are absolutely fabulous. Even if there is a pullback, you can even pull back to the 25,300, 25,200 level, the 200 period, sorry, the 14 period moving average in the in the daily, uh, sorry, in the weekly chart. That's the black line right there, um, and that MACD will still be positive, and the stochastic will drop from 89 percent, could even go down to 80 percent. But so far, this is really good action. So this is what I'm looking at here. Just once again, just really because it's part now, I've done the update, but this is part of what I'm looking at here and what I think is really important. One of the reasons why I wanted to hold a webinar fairly soon, and I've decided on the second, the 3rd of April, two weeks from tonight at 5 o'clock Eastern Time, is because this is a period that I've called Anything Goes. That's the Cole Porter song from the 1930s. Anything Goes it talks about four-letter words, talks about, I mean, everything. This is a period where you can say and do anything. It's absolutely okay as long as you're saying the right thing. So the excessivity within the degree that is acceptable is parabolic. Any, so that raises the whole level. And if you even blink in the wrong way, in the wrong direction, it's taboo. Now, a couple of things. When I did uh, Larry's show, yeah, when I did Larry's show this morning at nine o'clock, nine till ten Eastern time, by the time it got close to ten o'clock, I had said that I have a Chapman wave trim gauge. It's called. It's based on Richard Arm's index. I only use. I have no. I, I've never really used it the way I know he intended to use it. I just use it in numbers that I've noticed over decades, and when it's a particularly high reading. There's a certain number that I look at. It says that within one to two sessions, the E-mini should bounce nine to 11 points. And that says that even if you're shorting, you've got to think of it more as a short-term trade because there could at any point be this explosive move to the upside, and maybe then you could short again. But that's the issue is that you've got to be ready for some kind of one of these rogue waves that suddenly comes up when you least expect it. Okay, it's so number one. Number two is... That same reading has got a very high percentage success rate. And if it's very low, it'll say it has an even higher percentage uh, success rate. But it was high, very high today. So, and as someone says in the den, it was at 2.48. And that to me is very high. All right, that says too quickly off the top of a recovery high, have we hit a trend gauge that was really excessively high? That says to me, this is what we've got to be looking for. And I'm only looking for the results. I'm not predicting what at this particular point. I'm saying the QQQ even now is holding beautifully. Technically, it's in this Chapman wave uh, repellent zone, this inside track repellent zone, the green. And, and I can make this green again so you can really see it. <laughs> let me have a look. Uh, let me just check it out. Uh, yeah. 
Sorry, I'm just checking this. I want to see that you can see what I can see, and therefore I'll go to the to the TFNN. There it is. Yeah. Okay. Good. So you can see that green line there. It went above it and closed it on it yesterday. It went below it today, uh, below the green line, the outer the outer line, and the inside line, the pink dashed line. So it's going to be very important. A close. It's a 178.80 right now. A close. Tomorrow or Friday, below the low of yesterday, 178.29. It's called a 178. Will be quite negative. Good. So that, that's the parameters we're looking at. A close in the next by Monday. A close above 180. Now this is what I said that I made me a little nervous. I look at only certain candles. You know, some people look at all sorts of candles. Uh, Steve Rhodes does studies on, on just numerous uh, candles. I happen to like just maybe three candles altogether, and the one of them is this doji candle. And sometimes I call it a long-legged doji, and sometimes I go over there, it's just a little doji plus sign. Yeah, it's a bigger plus sign, okay? The wick up and wick down is quite long, but only because of in relative to this candle, not relative to other candles. Now, because of that candle, it says to me that a cl and the 180 round number recovery high on the 19th yesterday it says to me be careful this is a moment where you could have a bit of a pullback and i'll say a bit of a pullback 177.10 is the nine period exponential moving average support and 176.07 is the 14 period moving average support i suspect if it goes below 177 that MACD will then probably be closing, going, uh, crossing negative, and the stochastic could have dropped to about 87%. It goes under 176. That MACD is going to be very negative, and the stochastic will be in the 70s. So those are levels that I'd be watching for. Within a couple of days, if there's just kind of a ho-hum with the Fed, whatever they say, if, I'm not actually expecting that much to the upside. But I suspect that if we do break above 180, we have a couple of flurries to the upside. Now then, now we could look at this as a potential peak B, if it's no new high today, recovery high. And then we can go to a C and then a D. And then I'm recommending be careful. Okay? But that be careful could have, that could happen today at 3 o'clock. If the, if the Dow is, we are down 133 right now. If we are, you know, back to this level after some kind of a, some kind of rally pre-market, you know, usually they try to flatten everything out by the time the Fed makes a statement. All right, I needed to get that out and show you that there's all these different things. TLT, above 122.50, says, you know what, um, there's a chance that if the market is pulling back, the Dow's down 160, S&P's down 15, and you're seeing the TLT up at the 122.50 area, it says, you know what, Maybe money is coming out, the old traditional money comes out of the volatility of stocks, meaning stocks go down, money comes out, and goes into the security of the safety of bonds. We'll see. Hey, here's the other thing, the dollar. If the dollar at 96.45 plunges under 96.20 this afternoon by 3 or 4 o'clock, I would say that that's not a very good sign for the dollar, and if the gold has a reversal and is suddenly trading instead of 1301, is up near the highs of the day, somewhere near the 1307, 1311 area, that'll be very positive for gold. I'll be right back. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website, you can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi right, folks, so back to gold. So gold, I just wanted to show you that there's this, there's this arch formation. Uh, let me just do this for some people who are just, I know the number of people that have said that they're going to uh, be uh, watching the show at uh, noon today. So let me just say, here's this opening call. Um, Webinar for subscribers a week from today, April the 3rd at 5 p.m. Wednesday. It will be archived, hour and a half. Um, we're going to be discussing many things. I've called it Anything Goes, the stock market's key phase. And one of the reasons I've done that is because, let me just show you the patterns we're looking at. This is the H pattern. This is the arch pattern. This is the cup formation. There are only three patterns as far as I'm concerned. Straight up, straight down. The arch could be made up of an H and, and an arch or an inverted V, but it's the same thing. You're coming back to your starting point, and the U, where you're coming back to your starting point after dropping. All right? So within that context, what I'm looking at here is that there's a possible arch formation here. If gold starts to break under 1290 at any point in the next day or so, and if it spikes higher, You've got this trend line support. You've got a rising falling axe. Uh, let me just say it's an inver inverted one. And that says fabulous action if there's a move into the 13, 12 ish area, because that starts leg C. The MACD should, in fact, turn up. Stochastic is starting to improve. This is an important period for gold because it's stuck in this range between 13, 10, and 11. And the low in the 1280s, it needs to break out. But the weekly chart says it's still going to be range bound for a little while longer. And you can see that. Look at important stocks like gold, which is Barrick Gold, down 13 cents. My stock, not my, it's a stock I follow for decades. ASA, it's a South African stock. I'm originally from South Africa. So ASA, gold and precious metals. Look at this. Not very good action. Had a fabulous move to that peak D. Peak D is what we always look for for potential um, reversal. It's done that. It's in a range now. It doesn't want to break 980, and it wants to. It's at 10.05, down 11 cents. Uh, not a great-looking uh, chart at this point. Let's see what happens. So it's going to be very important, if you're a gold bug, to see that the gold stocks, the GDX, gold miners, can't be making arch formation, especially with this doji candle failure pattern right here. <clears throat> at 2194, 
by Monday and Tuesday. You want to see this in the 2255, 2263 area or higher. So this is going to be important. Okay, silver. Whoops, silver um, is trading at. Whoops, let me just get this off now. Silver is trading at 1532, down 0.05. It's got a little bit better chart uh, in the daily. It's just sideways. That's all it's doing. It's more like a rectangle formation right now. In fact, we could be looking at this as a W soft W oops, soft W formation right here. One. Here's your second W. And it could just be in a rectangle W formation trading. It needs to get into the 15. Oh, I'd say the 1550s and, and hold there, and that would be good action. EUR, USD. Look at this. The euro <coughs> holding quite well. It's up 0 0.0034. Make a little doji can, leg B. Look at this pattern here. This is going to be very important. You want to see a, a bowl formation in the euro. You don't want to see it keep making lower lows and lower highs. You want this to turn around if you're if you're looking at euro strength then you don't want to see all these candles going nowhere you want to see price movement and time not time and no price so at 1.135 you actually need to see by a week from today you want to see the euro in the 1.1259 ish area one two yeah 130 this is this is not good it's not bad, but it's not good. It's more in the rectangle formation. If you're looking at the USD JPY, which is the yen, dollar yen, currency pair, Psi makes its peak D. Remember, peak D is where we see other things possibly happening. Look what happened. Again, another peak D. Sideways action making almost an arch. But no, it will act very well if the euro, I'm sorry, if the yen is able at 111, 111.42, is able to cheat this as a up channel by going to the next level, which would be above the high of the 15th of March, 111.94. Just 0 0.001 higher, it starts a leg. Ooh, that'll be a leg. 47, oh yeah, that'll just be a leg B. <laughs> but it, it will be a change. Instead of the arch, you're going to get the cup formation. Remember, you're just fighting between the cup and the arch, the cup and the arch, cup and the arch, and then straight line moves up or down. All right, so that's it. And I'm also looking at the VIX index. So the VIX right now is trading at 14, up 44 cents. To go from 12, look at this, 12.37 to 14.30 in two days off a recovery high. Uh, in this case, a recovery low, whatever you call it, unrecovery low. Um, I would say that that's a lot of pessimism, just diving into the market. And that's my greatest, my, my greatest concern is that maybe I'm missing something. Um, I'm looking at it technically, and I don't yet see anything just suggesting that this is a major sell. I, I think there could be a near-term pullback. I have no problem with that at all. But to come off in the S&P, after all this is based on the S&P, you're looking at the S&P, hits a high. Uh, maybe I'll do this because uh, many of you don't necessarily get the S&P, but you do get the SPY. It's easy, SPY. That's the trading vehicle for the S&P. It's the deposit receipts for the S&P 500. 284.36. Let me just type that in. 284.36. It's a high of yesterday. Today's low so far is 280. So you've got a four point drop, is it 2% or something like that? And yet you've got the volatility index spiraling from the 12s to the 14s. Says to me, maybe that's a little too much. I don't know. I'm just thinking. Now, there was a chart that we looked at earlier on when I did when I did uh, Larry's show. It was called, uh, was that the one? Let me just see which one it was. Uh, let's see. I think it was. Oh, man, did I lose that? Oh, yeah, it is. Okay. It was, in fact, AJRD. 
So AJRD, I think this is the one, I hope this is the one. Yes, yes, fabulous. So look at this weekly chart. You see this weekly chart? All I'm doing now is I'm looking at the, this is Aerojet Rocketdyne Holdings, and we did an analysis of that. You see this peak E, first the peak D, big pullback from peak D, and the MACD and stochastic turned down sharply, but very quickly it rallies again with much weaker technicals and it goes higher, goes to an E, and then it reverses. All right, now what we've got is a, a serious sell off because the MACD and stochastic are very weak. Well, wait a minute, they actually hold quite well, and then what does it do? It goes to just two higher peaks. I call this the this is the double camel hump. So it goes to the one without technical veracity to a G and then it fails. We'll do the same analysis on the daily chart of the SPY. I'll show you, I'll explain it. I'll be back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. Dow's down 144. S&P down 13. On this 20th day of March, this is what we're looking at. So you see what happened here. It went to a peak D. That's the SPY on the 4th of March at 276.84. Pulls back pretty sharply to 270. 2.42 on the 8th, and then it rallies. The MACD has so far deflected lower. It hasn't crossed positive, and the stochastic is still strong at 88%. So this is a period where this whole move, these two peaks that are occurring right now, 
well, we don't know the day is young, so 284.36. If by the end of the day we're at 284.37, besides being unbelievable, um, then that, this should be a peak. If there is a lower low and it goes under the 279.83 14-period moving average, I have to start to consider that that was that double high. I'd have to find another expression. But it's the, you know, there are some camels that have two humps. Most have one hump. The ones with two humps is the pattern that seemed to me most appropriate when you get an arch formation and then the stochastic, and then you get another arch formation, and that one goes over 80% and then under 80% within just a few bars and it, it collapses. That's what you'd have to see. You'd have to see a pullback, and the stochastic needs to go under 80% within a day or two, and that says, you know what? That is not a peak B, but a peak F, and that's a serious top. Now we've got time and some price based on the daily. The weekly is still, look at this, you can barely see that it's pulled back. Makes a new, this is still leg B. In all of, since the low of December, the week of the 28th at 233.76, there has been a tiny little peak A right here. It was almost an apology for a pullback, just a kind of a, a little breather. And look at the move. It's like an equal move to the upside. So this is an area where you can expect, and if you look at the uh, chart right here, whoa, look at that. Something happened down 216, some bad news, I guess. Um, this is on the e mini futures. Uh, look at this. The SP had 2856.18 as the Chapman Wave automated projection resistance, and that it went there within three points, I think it was. What was the high? 2857.42. 2857, is that right? They can't be. I'm sorry, 28. Cannot read it. Yeah, 52. Sorry, 52.42. Just under it. And uh, now it's pulling back. So we've got to be watching this very closely. Um, <laughs> a question of the den did Trump just tweet? Uh, we don't know. It was a rug pull for sure because it was holding very steadily. It was holding the E mini, was going sideways. I I when it hit that. 28th, 19th area, I had circled right here before my show. I, I think some of those of you in the den saw, I put a little circle in there at the 28, 25 level. It went there and uh, held sideways, and then kaboom, had this candle. Now, these series of sharp down moves, all intraday, it's going to be very important if one is a bull, to see that there's a, a pretty decent recovery by the end of the day, number one. In other words, you're down uh, in the S&P, you're down right now, uh, where are we? You're down 18, right? So you would want to see a rebound that says you're down maybe minus seven, minus six. Okay, that's the one thing. And the other one is within the context of all these different aspects, the the differential that we're looking at between minus 0.66 uh, in the S&P, the Dow is, there we are, minus 0.78. The QQQ must be now lower, and that is 0.30. Hey, 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 what's going on here? Oh, TFNN. Now, why would that be a TFNN? I wouldn't be missing getting a TFNN call, right? Um, so uh, let's see what's going on. Meantime, back at the ranch, just down 0.29% in the in the queues. So this is what I want you to do. I've said how important it is in the different areas. I said the VIX index, the, the bonds, uh, the different indices. I've spoken about, um, I haven't spoken about the XLF. The XLF has had a very nice run. It's giving some of it back today, just a little bit down. Oh, no, it looks like more. Now it's down 32 cents to 26.36. So this is another one. This is that, that deflection lower in the MACD. Went to 27.10 yesterday, trading at 26.38 right now. Um, one of the deepest pullbacks we've had in two days. Look at the beautiful moves to the upside. Uh, we're going to be watching that. Now, I want you to talk about, oh, it's just about, oh. this to me is also important. When I talk about the rotation through the different sectors, wheat is up two and three quarters at 4.59 a quarter. I've been looking at this positively for about a week, a little over a week. Look at corn. 
Corn is down a little bit. Yep, down one at 370 and a quarter. Also had a very nice run from the low in the 360 area. Uh, hits the 375, trading right now at 370. And soybean is up a half a point at uh, 904 and a half. So these are starting to say to me, there are certain areas that are going to be very important. Uh, we're going to be looking at not just not just the aspect of weekly charts that are holding well in my key indices, but what sectors are going to be helped and what sectors could you rotate to or fund managers rotate to if, in fact, there is a bit of a pullback. Oh, I see. You've got people waiting for me. Uh, Brendan Martinez, California. Brent, how are you? Oh, I just probably... Are you there, Brent? Oh, no, it's Mark first. Mark in Fort Collins. Mark in Fort Collins, are you there? Uh, this is Brent, actually, Basil. Uh, okay, Brent, I must have missed Mark in Fort Collins. I didn't even say, I went to the XLF not knowing that he was there. I had everything up. I was looking to see who's calling, and it must have scrolled down a little bit, so I didn't see it. That's why I got the TFNN call. All right, what are we looking at? This all came about with an experiment I kind of put in place back in January. Ooh, wow. We often yes. talk about under-the-radar stocks, and so I, I decided to go look for stocks that were a dollar or less, $5 yes. or less, $10 or less. And this is one that came up that was a dollar or less, so I, I bought it at $0.60, cents and I've already gotten out of most of the position the last couple of days, but I just wanted it to bring it to your attention as uh, – just an example of how the charts work at many different levels, I guess, is the, the main point. Absolutely. Yes, this is fantastic. So we're looking at CFMS called Conformus. Conformus. Conformus it ain't, yeah. <laughs> it, ain't, it ain't conforming to anything right now. It's just in its own, <laughs> its own trajectory here. Wow. It is trading at 2.26. It's only up 12 cents, which is 5.78%, but it was back in... Uh, January of 2019 at 0.35, actually December the 31st, and then uh, 0.36 was the low on the 1st of January. Wow. So uh, whatever technique you're using, um, this is beautiful because what you're doing is if you're correct, you are multiplying a magnitude of 2 to 3 or 4 or even more percent, uh, 100%. If you're wrong, you just have to get out. I'll be back. If you want to talk about it, I'd like to talk to you about it. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, good. I'll be back. We'll be back with Brent in Martinez, California, looking at 226 is the number. It's CFMS. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying Diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining.
mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for The Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find The Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Hi, folks, we're back, and we're back with Brenton Martinez, California. We're looking at CFMS, and that is Conformus, and Brent had it. He picked it out way back in January, and it was down in the single digits, and now it is trading at $2.26, up $0.12 cents in leg D in the Chapman Wave. Wow, fabulous move. So, um, so what you did is you did you you worked out some kind of formula and you you do a scan and you look at these particular stocks. Yeah, I just decided to go search for stocks again, like I said, that were a dollar or less, five or less, ten or less, and I just I went through a number of different stocks and most of them didn't work. I just scrapped them and then I found some that I thought had potential and this was one of them. There's another one, Ion Geophysical IO at some point I wanted to look at. So there's. My point is there's just stuff out there that, you know, maybe not on everybody's radar that, that's worth looking at, and, and uh, so that's why I wanted to bring it to your attention. Yeah, that's, that's a really, you see, it's really important that whatever one does, you do it consistently. If it's a winning plan, it doesn't matter whether it just makes a little bit. I, I knew someone's passed away now who used to trade the market every day, every morning, um, and all he wanted was um, a certain number. It could have been 35 bucks. It could have been 75 bucks. He just done and got it. And he used that as as money that he would just put aside for trips to his, his uh, kids overseas. I mean, that's just whatever it is. And he was very successful at doing it. Did it over and over and different for well, not years but decades. And he, every he'd always work out a different way of doing it, different formulae, and he just got better and better. And that's the way you've got. It. And I love this that you've got a system. You planned it. Now, my only question to you is, what, what, why did you not, what, let's see, what would have got you to have taken profits back in February, around about the 19th, when it already spiked to the 120 in leg C with a doji candle and pull back? I just was willing to, when I buy something like this for the amount of money I was having to put up, the price I got in, I wanted to give it a chance to, to fully play out. And if I, you know, I wasn't going to lose money on it, but I was willing to give it a chance to, to trade for a while. And so okay. and, and you felt to do that. But yeah, that was my And you strategy. felt you had the comfort, comfortability to say, I can let it ride because I have made enough that if I do give back some, it's part of the experiment. I may as well just try to hold it as long as possible. Is that kind of the way you were thinking? Exactly. Yep, that's well put. Okay, I like that. That's really good. Now, I have a question for you. The other one was I-O-N? I -O -N? Ion? This I this I-O is the symbol. Ion Geophysical. Oh, yeah, I know this one very well. I've watched this one for, I, you know, I had a, a caller when I was doing Larry's show. We were talking about stocks. He spoke about a particular stock that he missed. I said, finally, I think you've got a chance to get in. Um, this is one that I have followed. I, I, I like to do this on the keyboard. I'll just close my eyes and I'll tap the keys and I'll see what comes up. Every once in a while, I just like to do that serendipitously. Years ago, I did IO 
and then OI. So IO is um, Ion, Ion Geo Geophysical, and OI is Owens, Illinois, I believe. Yep, Owens, Illinois. So I would, every once in a while, I'd just tap the keys and I'd look. So this Ion, I, I have, I don't know if we've ever owned it in my newsletter. I think there was one period where we did. This has spectacular, this is like advanced micro devices in a way. This thing, I'm just scrolling, let's go to 2003. It has a low of 49, somewhere in about July, uh, maybe May or June of 2003. And then it has a run and it goes all the way to 200, 273.90 in June of 2008. Then it has a little bit of a pullback. It pulls back to 15, no, to $12.45. And then it has a little bit of a run to 208. I don't know if you ever looked at the chart on a long-term basis. And I've just followed this and I've always said, wow, this is one you want to get at the low. Brent, you've got your eye on this. This is one of those that when it really, or look, even the last move that went from 2055 cents in February of 2016, eventually went to uh, $32.45 um, in, in February of 2018. So, that's yeah, the, I, yeah, it makes some pretty crazy moves up and down. <laughs> the key is getting the bottom as much as you, as best you can, I guess. <laughs> so anyway, fabulous. <laughs> I love that. Thank you so much for calling. Let us in on that. Uh, I, I love that idea, and good luck. Keep keep doing it. All right. Take care, Basil. It's great talking with you. Have a Thank wonderful day. You too. Thank you very much. So, Bye. folks, let's just do this. We've got um, we've got I got a lot of questions here. You know, maybe tomorrow after everything quietens down a little bit, I can do that. I'm I'm thinking if it, if it, if they need me or not, I'm not sure. I might be able to do a Larry's show tomorrow at 9, so I'll be doing 9 and, and noon. I don't know yet. I'm going to try to do that. Um, just real quickly, yes. So this is what I want you to show you. Just for, for Mark. Mark, I hope you're listening. Um, who was asking about the XLF. I'm sorry, I did not see your call. I did a little bit of work on this, but I just want to do a little more. I wanted to say that the XLF, the financials, if you look at the XLF, it's pulled back here, a, a big percentage move. It's had a great percentage move from the 2580 area up into the 2710 uh, area. So now it's pulling back. What I think is really important is that the weekly chart 2822 is the, I have to just check that. The weekly nine period moving average is 20, 2817, and the 14 period moving average is a little lower, 2607. And we're at 2642. So there's a bit of a way to go down, but if there is a close on a weekly basis, that's a whole week on the Friday, if there is a close underneath 2568, the low of the 8th of, uh, week of the 8th of March, I have to consider that that arch formation says there could be a little bit more to the downside, but the MACD and stochastic are really strong right now, although the stochastic's at 82%, it is flat. Flat is good. I like that. So I'm looking at this, and I'm really, I think today is quite, quite important. I just went through those commodities, and to say there are all these different areas that either are on the cusp of breaking out or maybe pulling back again, You've had some spectacular moves. Is is the semiconductor index up here? Is this going to be a peak F? Because all of a sudden, by Friday's close, the weekly chart says, whoops, you're now under 104. Not good action at all based on the daily, but still holding OK. But it says, whoo, you've got to watch this closely now because it's a consolidation. Those are the factors we're looking at. We're looking at the dollar. I'll do this again. The dollar, which is at uh, up 5 cents. It isn't responding as well as it should. So by the end of the day, depending on what the Fed says, as I recall, if the rates are going higher, no, nah, I'm not going to mix that up. I can't remember anymore. I've got, I, I, I just have to step back a second. I've been working at this for too long today and last night and yesterday. So whatever it is, if in fact gold starts to push higher and gets into the, um, into that, level that I was talking about, pushing the dollar much lower under 96.20, maybe under even 96. And since the dollar is going to have much more of a, a digestive phase, and then all of a sudden you've got gold in action. I actually think that these things are stuck in a range. And let me just step back a minute. I think we're stuck in a range in the dollar. I think we're stuck in the range in interest rates. And I suspect 
that the volatility in the oil started its big move to the upside, at least for a little while. That's the reason why I want you to have a webinar two weeks from today to be able to assess what March candle looks like on the weekly charts, monthly charts, and we can get a nice fresh look at what's going on. I'll be right back straight after these messages. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get the competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge heard here at TFNN.com. Hi, folks. Uh, I just got a lot of questions. Let me just run this as if it's a lightning round. The IYC, I focused it on my, for my subscribers over the weekend. I said this is going to be quite key. This has Amazon. This is the U.S. Consumer Service uh, ETF services. Amazon, Comcast, Disney, Home Depot, Netflix, McDonald's, Walmart, Starbucks, Lowe's. So it made that cup formation. You can see the technicals here are okay. The stochastic's at 85%. That's good. But look at the price. It went to this cup formation, left side, right side price time match. Did it in a good time, just exactly uh, um, almost to the day. Spikes at 204.92 over the 202.35. Doesn't close it. Uh, yep, it does close over there. That was good. And then today, red candle. So watch this closely because if the IYC happens to to pull back from 201 right now to under 200.30 in the next two days. That's not a good sign. That's a short-term top, cup formation, double top, dreaded uh, upside-down dreaded age. You could come back all the way to the uh, 199, 198 area as a consolidation. Weekly chart is still fabulous. So just real quickly, so Federal Express, this is, these are hints of not such good action in, in certain sectors. Look, Federal Express down 9 at 171. Uh, look at that monthly chart, had an all-time high back in the 278 area, plummets to the 155-ish area, now it's at 171. Got to watch that closely. 
uh, if you have XRT, XRT is the um, retail, not good action. Janet H. Patton, I drew it in over here. I said, be careful that left side low. We went under it. We're a little over it right now. 43.99, a close under 43.60 in the next day or two would say, uh-oh, now the retail is about to go. So this is, a, this is a very important period. Now, what I was expecting is that there's a chance that we could just sally up to a slightly higher highs, and by the end of the week, Friday or Monday, I'd start to get signals. But if they occur today, we'll have to deal with that. So we've got we've got all long positions. Everything's you know not everything, but almost all have been done really well. Um, we'll have to see what happens after this. And not only that, we would like to add on some of these positions on a pullback. So on one hand, I'm waiting for a pullback. On the other hand, it's kind of nice if it keeps going up. Hey, have a great day. Steve Rose next. Dave White. And then, of course, Tom O'Brien. Uh, check out my opening call. I hope you will find it educational. Don't forget my webinar coming up for subscribers a week, uh, two weeks from today, April the 3rd at 5 p.m. called Anything Goes. Dum, 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 dum. I'll be back tomorrow.